This is called, there is more to your deliverance. Let me see if I can get this here. There's more to your deliverance. This was from a sermon preached a couple of years ago. Um, I call this the Dookie sermon. <laughs> this is the Dookie sermon, y'all. <laughs> um, let's get into this. I, I think I'm... Let me see if this is it. Let me see if I'm speed it up first. Let me double check my microphone. Double check my microphone. There we go. So I, I forget that I forgot to hit record on this because I was going to record this, but let me see what they got fully delivered. And everyone at that meeting is still uh, serving the Lord uh, today. Most of them are still with me and others have transitioned on to uh, other. OK, he gave his testimony and I'm not even going to play that, but we're going to get a little bit into this sermon here. The title of my message is you're not digging deep enough. OK, <laughs> the title of his message at Hungry Gen. Hey, we're still on. We're still on this. We're going to see if maybe this was what, uh, maybe this was Gino's problem. <laughs> maybe, maybe we got to even say this was Gino's problem with having a problem with deliverance. The title title is you're not digging deep enough. Hopefully we can get to that place. The title of my message is you're not digging deep enough. I know that we are in a deliverance house and praise God that I don't have to convince you guys of deliverance because as I travel the country, I spend an enormous amount of time just trying to get to the church, get the church to a place of agreeing that a Christian could potentially be demonized. I am so grateful that I don't have to do that here, that I don't have to convince anything other than those of you that are here uh, new for uh, the first time. I want you to turn with me very quickly to the book of Ezekiel, uh, chapter, chapter eight. I want to talk to you about you're digging, but you're not digging deep enough. Some of you, your deliverance Okay, you're digging. The problem with your deliverance is you're digging, but you're not digging deep enough. We go in there, y'all. We go in there. Can only be acquired when there is a perpetual, intended, militant, aggressive effort in continuing to dig until you find the nucleus of what actually is going wrong in your life. Now, most of us, we get deliverance once or twice, and we kind of stop there. Or we kind of just linger in this ecosystem of deliverance where, you know, I'm, I'm in a house of deliverance, and I'm good, you know, and you come up to the altar, um, and amen. Deliverance, you know, it's actually... A labyrinth. It's not a maze. A maze can just be figured out by just retracing your steps and then you follow this particular pattern of, you know, go forward 10 steps, turn right. And when you turn right, you know, go left and then go back one and then go this way. And if you keep repeating it, then you kind of figure your way out. And that's where most kind of churches, they, we get into this ritualistic, you know, this pattern version of deliverance where we dwell in this ecosystem of deliverance and we just kind of, yeah, I know that, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's, it's kind of, but then there's this underlying issues that go deep that can only be figured out not through, rep not through repetition, but through the supernatural gift of the word of wisdom where you can figure out how you really get delivered. Because true deep deliverance is figuring out a labyrinth. And in case you don't know what a labyrinth is, in order to get out of a labyrinth, it has nothing to do with, uh, pro it has nothing to do with uh, following uh, the same protocol. It has to do with problem solving. Because sometimes a door in a labyrinth actually that says exit is a lie and actually takes you back to the beginning. That's what a labyrinth is. It's like Alice in Wonderland, where you drink, you think this, what you're drinking, uh, got, it looks like poison, but God is saying drink that. So uh, look, right now, it's already so messed up. Does this sound like proper biblical hermeneutics or exegesis? Do you, do you, do you sense any of that here? Herman who? Um, but it goes far cringe from there real soon. So that way Alice can shrink enough size and humble yourself to get into a little door that's actually narrow. For the kingdom is actually a narrow door. Did you catch that revelation? So this is how I delivered. That's where I was. I was trapped in trying to figure it out, uh, trying to uh, um, protocol my way through deliverance other than finding that it's actually requiring me to go deeper. Ezekiel chapter 8. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to give you a sermon, you know, the three points. Um, I'm going to give you a thought. I'm going to do what is called an exhaustive teaching, which means I'm going to take one thought and I'm going to drive that point in, repeating it, leading up to. Well, wait, <laughs> wait a minute here. I got to go here. He's going to do, what did he call it? An exhaustive teaching. I'm already exhausted. It's funny. <laughs> if there ain't anybody out there exhausted, I'm exhausted. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to give you a sermon, you know, the three points. Um, I'm going to give you a thought. I'm going to do. So I'm not going to exegete scripture. I'm not going to use proper biblical hermeneutics. I'm going to give you a thought. I'm going to give you an exhaustive, <laughs> an exhausting sermon. What is called an exhaustive teaching, which means <laughs> I'm going to take one thought and I'm going to drive that point in repeating it leading up to we'll call you up and. Let me help you get delivered. How many of you want to get delivered this morning? Oh, go through some deeper deliverance. Amen. All right. So um, I'm going to kind of take you there apostolically. I'm going to take this one thought and I'm going to keep driving in. So it's not going to be where is this heading and what is the conclusion? It's going to be a battering ram of the same thing. Bang, 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 bang. Why? Because each time we bang in, we're digging deeper. We're digging deeper. Because the title is you're not digging. You're not digging deep enough. As a matter of fact, hold your finger there. 
actually the opening context is in Deuteronomy 23 verses 9 through 14 and then it's Ezekiel chapter 8. Now remember, you're not digging deep enough. Catch the metaphor there. Deuteronomy 23 verse 9 through 14. Now look at what this says and keep the metaphor in your mind or the type and the shadow or the symbolism to help you understand a spirit. So why wouldn't Mr. Bragani think that, that Geno Jennings wasn't digging deep enough? <laughs> I'll tell you what. We all need to dig a pit. If anyone who's fallen under this delusion, okay, and this false doctrine needs to dig a pit and do what Mr. Brigani says with their teaching. Spiritual truth. When you are encamped against your enemies, keep away from everything impure. Verse 10 now. If one of your men is unclean because of a nocturnal emission, he is to go outside the camp and stay there. But as evening approaches, he is to wash himself. And at sunset, he may return to the camp. Now look at verse 12. Here's where things get very interesting. You must designate a place outside the camp where you could. Okay. <laughs> this is like, it, it gets very interesting. You got to go outside the camp if you've had a, a moment. What do you call it? Nocturnal emission. Y'all know what he's talking about? We're just going to keep this rated G. But you know what he's talking about. Nocturnal emission. But look, you got to go outside the camp. Here's where things get very interesting. You must designate a place outside the camp where you can go relieve yourself. Now look at this. As part of your equipment, you must have something to dig with. Now the King James Version will tell you a small shovel. All right, now look what it says. Where you can go relieve yourself. Now, I believe we all know what relieve yourself here is actually meaning. Where you can go dookie. <laughs> where you can go poo poo. <laughs> He's literally saying that. This is from Deuteronomy. In the camp. You know, you don't want to dookie in the camp. You got to do it outside the camp. <laughs> okay. Look at verse 13. As part of your equipment, you must have a small shovel to dig with. Now, stop right there. Let me just interject something. For too long, we've only been carrying swords. And God is saying, with your sword, carry a shovel. Did you catch that revelation? Did God say that? Did God, <laughs> Did God say in that text that deliverance ministers or even Christians need to carry a shovel? Is there anybody who doesn't have running facilities? You don't have a place to go, number one or number two? Is that hermeneutics, exegesis, sola scriptura? Are we, are we witnessing sola scriptura here? For too long, we're either, because we're evangelical, we're either carrying a sword or we're told to build. So we're either carrying a sword on one hand, like Nehemiah, and a hammer on the other. There's actually a third equipment that you and I also, also have, and it's actually a shovel. Why? Because in the process of our fighting against your enemies, and also in the process of our building, there are moments that you need deliverance, that you need to relieve yourself. And in the middle of your... <laughs> you can't make this up. You got, you're going to have to use it. You're going to have to use it in the middle of deliverance. You're going to have to relieve yourself. I assume that his church doesn't have restrooms. <laughs> right, right. Uh, they don't have running water. Oh, this is so, so, so disturbing. <laughs> Try to make a sermon in that. <laughs> uh, this is what, when you just will literally pull random verses totally out of context and push them together and make your own doctrine and pour your own meaning into it. <laughs> Why well, I, I stopped uh, Alex at a unflattering position but yeah i need to take a screenshot of that hold on y'all yeah we need a screenshot of this because that'll be on a thumbnail coming up all right <laughs> let's go on uh, i call this the dookie sermon war you can't just say hold on enemy and then stop and then take care of business you can't do that because if not, guess what happens when you do that? And here's what happens with many of us in the deliverance ministry or in this deliverance ecosystem. We're fighting enemies. Uh, we're also building while we're fighting. But at the same time, we're defecating all over the camp. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, y'all. I don't know. That's a horror dude. You defecating all over the camp, all right, and you defecating all over how to interpret scripture. That's true. That's true. Now watch this. Look at this. As part of your equipment, have something to dig with. When you relieve yourself, dig a hole and cover up your excrement. 
For the Lord your God moves about in your camp to protect you and deliver you from your enemies. So your camp must be holy so that he will not see your excrement while he's defending you. So do you see it? So for too long, God is in our midst. How many of you know God is in our midst? But at the same, how many of you know he's protecting us in our midst? How many of you know that he is also fighting against the enemies? But as he is walking, watch this, against the enemies, he is also noticing at the same time that there is feces all over the camp. Anybody been in If you walk in a church and there's feces all over the floor, or if you see um, receptacles for people to throw up in, uh... Yeah, what did he, what Beggy said? He looks happy about this doctrine. It's that's spooky, man. That's spooky. Uh, I use the Bible study on Discord. I've been hard to join. Been off for a while. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, Pagani is exhausting to listen to. That <laughs> dirty beard is distracting me. Yeah, I know. Um, this is pure madness. That's right. I got to hear it again. Did he really say that? Against the enemies, he is also noticing at the same time that there is feces all over the camp. So this is the reason why it's saying that as we go to war, not only are we slaying enemies, not only must we be holy, but at the same time as we're fighting, we should be digging holes. And as we dig a hole, what do we do? In the moment when we're fighting and we feel that we need deliverance, we are to relieve ourselves in the hole and cover it up and keep fighting. This is the reason why the title of my message is, you're not digging deep enough. You have to dig deeper to be able to put all the excrement inside the hole and cover it up and continue in your warfare. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because this house has a deliverance ecosystem, so I'm not teaching something that you haven't already been doing. What God sent me here to do is to tell some of you that you're actually fighting, you're actually warring on good warfare, but at the same time, where are you putting and where are you relieving yourself? <laughs> what in the world is this? Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> now, look at this. Ezekiel chapter 8 now. Turn with me. Is this good or is this? Is he going over? Just kidding. All right. Then he brought me to the door of the temple. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. He went from Deuteronomy to Ezekiel. Two totally unrelated items. I am lost. I am not going to Pagani's church <laughs> until we get a bacteria sample from the carpet if they're relieving themselves. <laughs> what I. I was sent here to do do, do do, the do do. Uh. Then he brought me to the door of the temple courtyard where he could see a what in the wall? He could see a hole in the wall. Now look what it says. He said to me, now son of man, dig into the wall. So I dug into the wall and found a what? I found a hidden doorway, bingo. There is where my spirit of generational curse and strong man of destruction, that's where it was hiding. Now what's interesting in this text was that this doorway was hiding behind a wall that was covered. Oh, wow. What a coincidence. <laughs> what a coincidence. Um, thanks, for, thanks for the super chat, Anna. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, it was hiding behind uh, a wall. Um, and he's connecting this to, we didn't play his testimony because that's bad enough and embarrassing. But And that's where his demon was hiding, was in a hole in a wall. And the only way that they was able to be able to go beyond the wall is Ezekiel had to dig into a small hole that God, by the finger of the Lord, had poked into the wall. This is why the Bible says, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then surely the kingdom is among you. Now, many of your problems, that those of you under the sound of my voice, you're saying, but I don't understand. I'm, I'm, I'm in deliverance. What, what, what is still potentially wrong with me? Very simple. You haven't paid attention to the small hole that the finger of the Lord has poked in a wall that you think is nothing there. The door is behind a wall that has been plastered over, but God loves you enough to tell you there's a hole there. Pay attention to it. And the only way you could go there is, Holy Spirit, remove the wall. No, the Holy Spirit is not going to remove the wall. You have to take the shovel and you have to dig. And watch this. And you have to dig deep enough to be able to find it. Wow. This is horrific. I hope you can understand this is not what that scripture is talking. The scripture has nothing, nothing to do with deliverance. And I've read his books. This is what's in his books. The secrets to deliverance and the secrets to generational curses is filled with this kind of foolishness and nonsense if this is an example of what you call sola scriptura and preaching you're unqualified you need to shut it down shut it down these texts that he's using have nothing nothing related to demons or deliverance this is how you create a frankenstein monster so it's not just well i did look there's nothing there god says dig deeper 
dig deeper. It's nothing different than what Elijah told the servant when he said, I don't see anything. And he said, go back and look again. And go back and look again. And go back and look again. And finally, finally, the servant came back and said, I see a cloud the size of a man's apostle, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, the size of a man's hand. What? What? What's wrong with you people? And, um, I haven't used this Wait one. Wait a minute. You. Who are you? What are you talking about? How many different, totally unrelated scripture, totally unrelated, disconnected, convoluted, um, what kind of a Frankenstein monster message are we talking about here? He, he, we went from Deuteronomy to Ezekiel to Elijah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and there's even, uh, forgive me for saying this, anal demons, according to Mr. Pagani, and that need cast out of your anus. And I'm not making that up. I'm not trying to, that's not sarcastic. That's in his book. Let me run this back here because I got confused myself. Uh, where are we at here? And go back and look again. And finally, Wait. finally. How did we go from Ezekiel? Let me see if I get this. And you have to dig deep enough to be able to find it. So it's not just, well, I did look, there's nothing there. God says, dig deeper, dig deeper. It's nothing different than what Elijah told the servant when he said, I don't see anything. And he said, go back and look again. And go back and look again. And go back and look again. And finally, finally, the servant came back and said, I see a cloud the size of a man's apostle, prophet, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, the size of a man's hand. I see something there. And then the Bible says, Elijah said, prepare for I hear what? The sound of an abundance of rain okay I, i'm right <laughs> they had nothing whatsoever and when he when elijah's servant saw a cloud the size of a man's hand then he he reads he i said he he throws in there that the meaning of that is pastor prophet or apostle uh prophet pastor evangelist and teacher uh no that's not what it meant it meant it was a small cloud that's what it meant Literal, grammatical, historical, uh, harmonizing. Whew. So I dug into the wall and I saw a hidden doorway. And God said, go in and see the wicked and detestable sins they are committing there. So I went in and saw the walls covered with engravings of all kinds of creep crawling animals and detestable creatures. And I also saw various idols worshipped by the people of Israel. So in this text, as he dug deeper, he was able to find a hidden doorway like a labyrinth. Because had he been amazed, he would have walked by and said, there's nothing there. I'm going to keep going. But God said, the way to get out or the way to go through deeper deliverance is problem solving. Which means what looks like nothing is there can actually be the place where something actually is there. So how do you and I receive deeper deliverance by digging deep enough? Now look at this. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. I'm going to show you the four levels of what this actually means, and then we'll kind of call you up, and we'll help you get set free. How many of you want to get set free? Amen. Amen. Look what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Notice how the verse here does not say, touch not the sinful thing. Most of us are not. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you, Susie Q. I'm going to have to say that when the scripture talks about deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons, I think this is exactly what this is. Yep. Yep. Hey, sissy. I think that was a, this is an excellent definition of what a doctrine of demons is. It's not, God is not the origin. God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of torment. And he said in that Geno Jennings uh, review, he said, when you convince someone they have a demon, tell them they have a demon um, and they believe it, they're going to have a spirit of torment. And, you know, some of y'all have been involved in this. I, Like I said, I've gotten hundreds of emails. I've gotten people who've come out of this and come to Sound Doctrine. They all have the same confession. When they were involved with this, they were tormented. I'm touching the sinful thing. Notice how it doesn't say, touch not the abominable thing. Most of us are not touching the abominable thing. The text here says, touch not the unclean thing. Unclean and sinful are not the same thing. Unclean just means ceremonially unfit to serve. That's all it means. It means on a sit down until you're ready to serve again. This is why when the priest would touch something unclean, they weren't disqualified from the priesthood. They were unfit to serve for a particular time frame. And then they were qualified again. Maybe the reason why, even after your deliverance, that you're wondering, why is it that I still feel like I'm on sit down and I'm going through deliverance? It's not because you're doing something sinful. It's because there are unclean things that are there hidden in a doorway that God is actually saying. You're not digging deep enough because you don't know that it is wrong. See, now watch this. 
There are four levels of what this. Why was that? What was that music about? <laughs> I don't get that music coming in there. This unclean thing would actually mean. I'm just...